Welcome to a simplex converted to a Great Western Railway Prairie Tank. This is part 10, how to make and fit the inner steam dome. The weather is very warm today. It's June the 25th, 2020, and I'm sat in my recording studio doing this voiceover with the air conditioning system set to number 11. So it's nice and cool at the moment. And why am I telling you this? Well, because some of the public YouTube viewers get confused. Patreon is running about two and a half months ahead of the public videos that are put on YouTube. So anything that I mention in this video that is topical needs clarifying with a date. The clip that's currently on screen shows me machining the flange. This was the flange that I made for the hydraulic pressure test to block up the large hole in the centre of the boiler where the inner steam dome is going to fit. You've just been watching me reducing the diameter of the centre part of the flange until it's a good fit inside the old steam dome. And now it's time to machine the new steam dome. This is a casting that I got from Blackgates Engineering. And just in case anyone is not sure where I get all my parts from, I get them from www.blackgates.co.uk, all one word. I've even put the web address on the screen, so now you know. Blackgates Engineering do not have an e-commerce type of website. What you have to do is email them and put in an order. Their parts turnaround and delivery is surprisingly quick. The first step though is to download the free catalogue and have a look what they actually sell. Back to the job, I faced across the end of the casting and now I'm reducing the external diameter slightly. As the casting is pressed hard against the back of the chuck, I can't get all the way down it. But that's okay for now, please keep watching the video. Now change the cutting tool to this chamfering tool just to take the corner off. And this is followed by once again changing the lathe tool and taking a very fine cut down the outside. I was very pleased with this casting because the outside diameter of the flange part of it is quite central with the main casting. Now it's time to get serious. I've reversed the part in the chuck and it's time to machine the flange. First of all, as always, I'm facing across the front. I took sufficient cuts across the front until I had a fully clean surface. Being wise after the event, really, for this job, I should have changed my lathe tool tip. The tool tip is still cutting okay, but the gunmetal has sort of a bruised appearance, but this will be fine once I've cleaned it up on some wet or dry sandpaper. I continue turning this part until every bit of the unevenness of the casting has been removed. For the next job, I need to change the position of the camera. I'm boring down the inside of the steam dome using a boring tool and the diameter of this hole in the centre of the steam dome is critical. It needs to be a perfect match with the diameter of the centre of the steam dome flange that I machined earlier in this episode. Although it doesn't appear obvious, I've set the length of the boring tool so that when it's all the way in the casting, it doesn't quite touch the top of it on the inside. The only reason I'm machining all the way in is because the pipe that sticks up from the regulator tube is not in the middle. If the pipe was exactly in the middle of the hole in the boiler, I could leave the internal part of this steam dome casting just as it was cast and only machine the end of it so that the flange fits into it. Because that is how I'm going to arrive at the correct number of holes in the right position around the steam dome to match the ones on the flange on the boiler. In no time at all I've bored enough out of the centre of the casting so that this happens. The register of the steel flange is a really good fit in the casting. In this clip I'm just removing the inner sharp edge. It's just a health and safety thing. It's always a good idea to remove sharp edges. That way there's less chance of cutting your fingers. For the rest of the turning operation I'm using a parting tool. Because the parting tool is quite thin and springy, I'm taking very fine cuts. This will give a nice flat surface on the top side of the steam dome's flange, so that when all the bolts are fitted, they've got something firm and square to bear down on. Once I'd machined the area around the flange with the parting tool, I traversed it longitudinally to cut the rest of it to the same diameter as the part that I machined earlier. The last part of this job is just to touch the edges with a file, once again to remove any sharp corners. 
Here's the story so far. One machined in a steam dome sat in place on the flange. There's plenty of room inside the flange to not restrict the flow of steam down the pipe into the regulator and then into the cylinders. Now it's time to drill all the holes. I'm using a couple of engineering clamps for this to tightly clamp the steel template to the inner steam dome flange. And by using these proper engineering clamps, the part will not move while I drill all the holes all the way through. I'm just using my Proxon motor tool for this. It's a great little machine, fully rechargeable, the battery lasts ages, and it's fitted with an almost new twist drill bit. And because this video clip is speeded up, I've drilled every hole through the flange on the steam dome in record time. Now comes the clean-up part. Once again, 400 grit wet-to-dry sandpaper, and I'm rubbing the steam dome on this wet-to-dry sandpaper just to clean up the mating face. It's probably a good idea to use a surface plate for this job, but my bench is flat enough in this area. Now it's time to bolt the steam dome down to the flange. This time I'm using some steel bolts. I'm still using the brass nuts though, and I'm also using some washers underneath them. I'll probably end up making some stainless steel bolts to go through into the flange. And to the viewer who commented about cathodic corrosion on steel bolts against brass, against gunmetal, I don't think these bolts are going to dissolve or corrode in the next few weeks. I do like this method of fixing though, because the bolts do not rely on being screwed really tightly down into the flange, which may make it a problem if ever you want to remove the steam dome. And if you've been following the series, you will notice that this same system using brass bolts was 100% pressure tight against 200 pounds per square inch of water pressure. Once I'd trimmed around the outside of the gasket with a sharp Stanley knife and then cleaned around it with some Scotch-Brite, it looks like this. When I fit the outer steam dome, which is just a cover, as you can see it looks okay, but it's a bit flat on the top. I think I'll remachine this, but not right now. That's it for this episode. I'd just like to say, as usual, stay safe, stay well. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.